Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Actors by night, he going crazy. So, this is my new room. Ah! Yo, I can't believe I'm saying that. Day, long overdue video that I was supposed to do from TikTok. If you don't follow me on TikTok, we friends now because you watching my video. We're friends. Hi, friends. I definitely did a video on Haitian voodoo scarves and it was completely like vague. <laughs> but I see so many people want to learn about it because not for nothing, there is nobody online talking about them right now. So, <gasps> Cosmic Unicorn to the rescue. <laughs> I just wanted to give you guys a more in-depth video just in case you guys are thinking about going out and buying your own Haitian voodoo scarves or just in case you just want to learn, you're just curious. Let's get into it. I got my handy dandy notebook just in case I forget some things because you guys know, when you guys watch my stuff, it's always like, uh, uh, uh. If you want a Haitian voodoo scarf, the first thing you need to think about is Haitian lineage. What is Haitian voodoo? Do you know what Haitian voodoo is? No, it's I don't know. For me, Haitian voodoo is considered a religion, okay? It's considered a religion that is practiced mainly among us only, which Haitian people, okay? Normally just a thing floating around Haitians. A lot of the times you really don't get to see much, you won't really know much, because while they were teaching us back in the day, when they learned, it was secret like you're not supposed to do it out in the open you're not supposed to tell nobody nobody's supposed to know that your family member is either a metres or a mombo you know or an ugan like these are things that you're supposed to keep secret so when they were teaching us as children or if they were teaching you as a child it was secret and nobody really understood why but as an adult they start to explain to you why the voodoo was so secret because not for nothing even haitian people feel like the voodoo is just dirty it's bad you're not supposed to do it like it's of the devil but the funny thing is when you go back into your roots into your lineage you figure out that it's nothing of that it is light it's just you trying to help people with this it's passed down it's practiced and passed down from generation to generation some generations skip because some people just don't want to practice most siblings there's always maybe only one who gets deep into it and the others they just don't so it all depends on what works for you and your family like every family is different by the way how do haitian voodoo scarves work now for those who are not really into the mystique or you're not really into the spiritual realm then this is just going to be something that you have for decoration but it's going to continuously give you bad luck like you can't be fucking around with stuff like that. The voodoo scarves are normally blessed by a mambo, a metres, or a ugon. Ugon high priest. <laughs> mambo high priestess. Metres is like the one in the middle. She's on her way to become a mambo. You understand? One of the three can either bless your mushwa and give it to you. This is not free. No Haitian practice or Haitian purpose is ever free. Everything always costs money. This is a spirituality where the loi, they're not cheap. They want the money, okay? <laughs> they want real money too, that I have to say that because some people think you can give the loi ancestor money. If you want to piss them off, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> but they like real cash, actual green money, okay? They bless the scarves. Nine times out of 10, they will tell you to either put it under your, um, your pillow or they'll tell you to carry it with you or they'll tell you to put it in your pocket these are all forms of protection under your pillow is a form of protection in the astral realm okay on your body is a form of protection for the outside because you never know what you're going to get into you understand so there are so many different ways that you can use it if you came to this video from tiktok you saw that the another way that i use mine was to figure out if people are this loyal or if they're even the one for me so what i did if you didn't see that tiktok i took my voodoo scarves and i put them under my pillows now when i do that i've done this maybe twice the first time the dude just jumped out of the bed and he was really like like <laughs> Like he was just, like, 
like really sweaty and he had to go. Like he pew, took out. That was funny to see, but I just wanted to know, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was having weird dreams about this person. The second time I did it was recently when I moved into this place. Um, I put them before I had the pillow, you know what I'm saying, on my bed and allowed the person to sleep there. The person has not been into my home ever since. You guys put two plus two. What's not for you, they're gonna remove, just like Moldavai, okay? Cause if you keep them around, there's not gonna be any, it's like there's not gonna be any good coming to you. The last example I showed you, when they removed this person, bro, I went viral. I'm not, I kid you not, I went viral. I gained over 7,000 followers. Like two, 3,000 in one day. I, it was like, what the? Now I'm working on a website. People are asking to buy things for me. Now I always wanted to have my own business and I wanted to build, but bro, it wasn't happening that quickly. Like it was stagnant. Like I, I couldn't understand it and I'm working so hard. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of discouraged me from opening up my own store. But then my TikTok just completely blew up. And for those of you who know, when you conquer TikTok, you feel like you can conquer anything. It's like that big battery in your back is out of control. Every color is different. Let's go into the meaning of the colors. The Loire like to attach themselves to certain colors, certain colors that represent them. Big example, blue would be Israeli Danton, okay? Pink, Israeli Freda. Red, I believe, is Obufei. Purple, Baosanzi. You get where I'm going with this. Each Loire has their own, so, Normally, if you see somebody and you know, like, you can look at it, you, oh, I know what you do. You know you'll see those colors. A lot of people, you don't see them. Me, you wouldn't even know I have them. They're either in my purse, or in my bed. Um, in a reading, I do keep them out because I, I just feel like called, like they tell me to just leave them. Like, we wanna sit here while you read these cards. We need to be here. So I like to put them there while I'm reading, especially when I do voodoo reads. They want to be present during the voodoo they would prefer that. It's just a different way for you to connect with the Loire and show that you're a loyal devotee. There is basically no way that you can work with the Loire or that certain Loire that you're trying to attract without showing them like, I, like you know what I'm saying, I'm here for you, uh, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> and by buying their color mushwa. Mushwa in English is scarf. Okay. We're learning everything. We're learning Kaya, we're learning Voodoo, we're learning everything. We're gonna talk about white as well. If you cannot get your hands on certain colors, because some places that you go to, they sell out pretty quickly. So you'll have to either come back or wait a couple of months because a lot of the times the mushrooms come from Haiti directly. So you have to like wait or the manufacturer has to make some more. So it, it, you just can't get your color sometimes. So if you happen to not get your color, sometimes some of the Loire will accept that white mouchoir. Some of them, Danto is one of them. She will accept that white mouchoir. You will be fine as long as you, you know what I'm saying, you're building whatever you need to build around them and you show them that respect, they definitely will come all the way through. How do I know which one I need is a question that I get a lot. Now, if you're not Haitian, then you definitely need to go see a Mambo or a Metres or an Ugon, definitely. Because just like a Babarao, they definitely connect with the Loa, they have dreams, and the Loa will tell them which one is for you or which one wants to work with you. Unlike Haitians, we are born with some of these Loa already attached to us because a lot of them claim us from belly into birth, you know what I'm saying? Or a lot of us are claimed at birth. This is how a lot of us already know who is the Loire of our head. A lot of people don't like to talk about who the Loire of their head are, and I agree because nine times out of 10, you can go ahead and learn about them, learn about her, and yeah, you, you never know what people will do with that. My aunt, she herself is a Metres. The way I figured out which ones I needed was, um, she had a dream and there was the mushroom. And they told her which one 
I am needed. The same thing um, in my pregnancy. I had uh, pregnancy problems with my daughter and they told her which do I was going to be protecting her and which which one I needed to wear. Example, that one was a dark green one, that's Kuzan Zakta. Now, what I'm starting to see in the more modern day is if you want to work with a certain Rua, you just go out and find the Mushua and you can go and get someone to bless it. But if you want to get deeper in and you want to know which one has chosen you specifically, then you have to go and visit the Momboy the Ugan and they will tell you. How do I go about getting the Mushua blessed? Before this, before this, I did my research. There are a couple of people selling mushwas on Etsy, and they answer the question that some of them are blessed by Mette, some of them are blessed by Ugo, but I say go by your discretion. Like, whatever feels wrong, it's wrong. If it feels like a nice connection, then that is for you. That's how me and my cousin always go about entering Haitian botanicas. Like, a lot of the time, some of you are just not welcome. And if you feel unwelcome, then it's, it's really, that's the real deal. You are not welcome there. Haitian botanicas also, let me say, are hard to come by in any state you are. In Florida, especially in Orlando, they're out there, but they're literally like in little corners and they're like hidden. You have to know somebody who knows someone to point you in the direction to go in there. Nine times out of 10, when you go in there, the mumbo is already in there and she's already working. She has other people working for her in the front. The only time she will come and address you is if you need something like your mushwa blessed, you're gonna get a reading, or she's gonna give you a bag. Last but not least, where can I get them? Where you can get them? Etsy does sell voodoo mushwas. Yes, they do. And they sell them in each and every color. Now, what I'm gonna say is the only reason why I don't shop on Etsy is because I'm a typical Haitian. $20 for a mushwa is just too much money. When I can go right here in Queens and pay $5 for it and have it blessed on top of that. So I just, some of them I just feel like it's just ridiculous, the pricing, but then again, Haitians and I understand them all the way. Everything that has to do with Haitians is always expensive. And then also make sure whoever is blessing is doing whatever they need to do because if they're not doing what they need to do with the law, the work that they're doing for you is not gonna work. It's going to really be like a form of bad luck. And trust me, I think this firsthand. So just don't. <laughs> One thing I'm gonna leave you guys with is there's two people online that I do trust that do practice and are initiated in Haitian voodoo. One is an authentic 100% Haitian. Her name is Priestess Rose. I'm gonna put her TikTok in the description. And there's another guy, his name is Voodoo Priest Man. If y'all don't watch Voodoo Priest Man on YouTube, what you doing? Voodoo Priest Man is Hispanic, yes, I know. For those of you who watch him, but what y'all who don't know is Voodoo Priest Man is an Ugon. You heard me, he is a fucking Ugon. Whatever you need in Haitian Voodoo, you jump over there to him because he fucking understands and he knows what he's talking about. When I first started to try to put the Voodoo out there, and mind you, when you leave your family, they don't want to teach you anymore. And sometimes in your circle or your coven, they will teach you only a little bit of what you need to know to keep you in line. So that way you, you can't, your powers don't outgrow theirs. It's, it's sad. But this man taught me a lot about my own religion. So the fact that I was able to learn from somebody who's not, you know, of my blood, chill, go over to this channel and learn. And he does talk. He's not one of those YouTubers that ignores you. Go write him on Instagram. He will definitely answer. I wrote him a couple of times, um, commented on his stuff, and he answers very quickly. Any other question you have, you can ask him if he himself blesses Mushwas. Um, I, I think he does. Don't quote me on that. Once upon a time, Priestess Rose did have Mushwas on her Etsy, and she definitely does bless things, but I went there recently and she doesn't have any more. I'm gonna see if I can like personally ask her if she's going to sell so that way I can send you guys poop over there because that one, she knows what she's doing like for real. And I would definitely love to have one of her. With that being said, that is all the information I have for you guys about Haitian voodoo mushwa, voodoo scarves. If you guys loved this information, you loved this video, give me a thumbs up. 
So that way I know to create some more Haitian group content and follow me on TikTok. I mean, follow my sad little Instagram because I mean, I'm still working on it. Follow me on all platforms, I do answer. Now the only thing is um, disclaimer, Facebook, I don't answer friend requests and that's only because Facebook is out of control. Like you wake up in the morning and somebody's threatening to kill you. Like it's weird. Man. I just don't. You can follow me, however, on Facebook, and I am definitely, like if you comment, I definitely respond or whatever, as long as it's a respectful comment. You can definitely jump into those DMs on Facebook, but bro, don't, don't, don't jump into DMs to jump into DMs. Like, jump in to ask some actual spiritual questions, okay? And please, if you do find me, make sure you type, hey, I'm coming from YouTube, or I'm coming from TikTok, or, like something so that way I know it's just you and I'm not gonna ignore you because I'm thinking like you're a horny guy or something. <laughs> Guys don't know the horror online. Like ugh. But thank you again. Thank you again for watching. Peace and many blessings. Come see you guys